So this video is not going to be about using Bryce as such, but about some very basic concepts about how you position your camera in your scenes to get the effect you're looking for. So essentially it's about composition really. So in this scene I've just set up a few elements. There's uh, Bryce primitive cubes arranged in this uh, V formation and this little fella here, a toon alien from Dust 3D. And he's here to help me explain something about scale. In this scene these blocks are in the default grey, the ground's in the default grey and the sky is just blue and I've deliberately turned off the haze and fog. And the reason for that is we're not providing any clues for, for the scale of this object other than this fella who's an alien and we don't really know how tall aliens are and well the scene around us. So at this point supposing I want to make this structure look huge and it doesn't look huge it just looks well about person height and and there's a reason for that which I'm going to explore and if you already know it then probably you don't need to watch the rest of this video but if you don't know why that looks about person height then here's the answer the reason it looks person height is because we assume a viewpoint from the perspective camera we're using in Bryce of a person I'll just switch to the side view here because I've, uh, I've enlisted Vicky's help to show us this so here's Vicky and I've placed the camera at her, that height of her eyes and she's looking out on this scene which is why she's looking down slightly at our alien fellow and the key point really to take home from this with the infinite plane extending to the horizon and being a true infinite plane and the horizon being flat then if we take her viewpoint out it'll be parallel to the ground plane and looking right at the horizon at infinity or at least digital infinity as it's expressed in the computer so even though we can't see Vicky in this scene if we use the control here that allows us to turn the wireframe horizon on off we know without even putting her in this scene that her eyes if she stood on the same ground that were stood on as the viewer in this scene will reach the horizon line and I can show you this directly by just moving Vicky into the scene so if I get hold of Vicky now and slide her into the scene you can see as a head this is a wireframe that the horizon lines lining up with her eyes so without even having Vicky in the scene we know that if we want to create the illusion of something being big or small we have to think about where the horizon is otherwise oh, you could say oh well no you don't need to do that you can just assume that we'll, we'll put a very small Vicky in the scene which is which is a fair comment here so let's say we'll, we'll, we'll go against that argument and say well if we just put a very small Vicky in the scene the scene will look vast well there's a tiny Vicky and she just looks tiny the the, the fact that we scaled her down hasn't helped the illusion that this is big because for us to be in a position to view this structure like this if we were Vicky's height we would have to be stood on something about this level so that our eyes aligned with the horizon and there's no other visual clues in this scene that tells us there's a structure that we're stood on that's giving us this view so it's breaking the illusion if we would have like some kind of balcony in front of us and other tall buildings around then we might assume we're on some kind of tall building to view this but as things stand no. The trick we have to do in, in a very simple scene like this is lower our camera and there we can coincide the horizon with Vicky's eyes, tilt it back and then we'll have the illusion that we're dealing with something big. And the alien now, although I've not changed the scale of him, it looks like a monster and there we've got Vicky. Likewise, the, the same applies if we're trying to make this scene look small. We need to move our viewpoint up so if we're a giant looking down on it and then we can zoom in a bit and, and narrow the field of view often helps here just because of the way our visual systems work we, then then we can create the illusion that we're a giant looking down on this scene and uh, you don't really get the impression that uh, that this is a, a, as a vast thing and we're viewing it from a helicopter because as I say without the material clues and atmospheric clues then you're purely left down to compositional choices which limits you a lot in terms of what you can achieve so 
the basis of this is if you're not providing enough information in other respects haze and fog or materials that tell you the scale of the objects or figures and and the and the and compositional elements that are assisted by uh, visual clues then if you're just dealing on in, in terms of uh, positioning your camera then you're left with where is the horizon line in my scene because that's going to tell me where the eye line of the viewer is and that will inform me how big this scene is and so it, at this point even though we have no clues as to why the Vicky is small or this alien is slightly shorter than a human we're prepared to accept that Vicky is small and this alien is shorter than a human even though a full-sized human is not visible in this scene and that is purely down to the relationship between the horizon line and us the viewer which is represented in the wireframe in Bryce by the perspective camera which is why if I can get the right view here on the side view wherever I've put it here we go which is why I prefer using the perspective camera rather than the director's camera because you can't see the director's camera in the wireframe whereas we can position this and uh, and make compositional choices about our scene just by moving the camera around in the wireframe view so essentially that's it I hope that was helpful and uh, I hope you apply these techniques in your own scenes.